reporting is a is a large aspect for a lot of people's preps. It's not like, you know, the same as food or water, but you can do a lot with a good quality cording. You know, some people like bank line. Other people like myself are a little more into parachute cord. It's also known as paracord. And I like uh, the U.S. made paracord. It's a lot uh, uh, more reliable in my opinion and in my experience. And so uh, a lot of the Chinese knockoff paracords out there, uh, they're using polyester. So uh, beware. Uh, what you want is a real U.S. made nylon paracord. And so I like Gladding uh, as a, a manufacturer. Uh, there's a few others, but Gladding is a really good one that the U.S. military uses. And so I like the, the 550 Type 3, which kind of designates the, uh, the diameter uh, or type of paracord. Uh, type 3 typically has seven internal strands uh, and an outer sheath, uh, depending on what color that you uh, prefer. And so uh, the mil spec designation uh, the designation is known as uh, MIL for mil, for mil spec. Uh, MIL-C-5040 type 3. So if you see that, you know it's a, a mil spec that the U.S. military actually uses it. And so once again, watch out for the Chinese knockoffs that are made in polyester. As you can see here, this is just an example of uh, a lot of different types of spools that I have. Um, I probably have over 20 different colors, and I have a lot of duplicates of the colors because I like to keep a lot of paracord in my cache. Uh, among other things, I like to make a lot of projects out of parachute cord. Uh, so this is one of my older uh, spools made in uh, December of 2011. And you can see I haven't used a lot of this one, um, but I have a lot of colors. So this says right here, 550-7, uh, which means seven internal strands paracord. This is the Coyote Brown. Uh, these spools that I get are a thousand foot spools. So it says a thousand feet right there. And uh, this one obviously is made by Gladding. And it says made in the USA. And uh, there you go. So that's kind of what a spool looks like. That one's a little older, but this is a, a 2012, uh, April 2012. Uh, this is a, a black. As you can see, I use a lot of black paracord. So. Of course, uh, some of these things I go through a lot more than others just because of projects. But um, So I, I try to keep a good collection. Uh, but I'm kind of one of those guys that likes to just uh, fumble around and uh, try new things out. So uh, let me show you a few things that I've been working on recently just for fun. Uh, I've been kind of getting back into paracord. So uh, last night in particular, I made uh, three new things, and i like to show it to you. The first example here is going to be a, a fob. They call it like a paracord fob. You can use it as um, uh, a means to uh, attach something to it, like your keys or small multi-tools. And when you put it in your pocket, you can have this uh, as kind of like uh, a point of purchase, so you can pull it out of your pocket. So these are really great. And they also, if you need them, you can take them apart and use the cording. Uh, so this is... Um, a representation of a cobra crook braid. So this is what the braid looks like. It's pretty cool. I like this braid a lot. And uh, I've just kind of been kind of messing around with this braid more so lately. And uh, here's a modified uh, cobra crook uh, bracelet right here, or like I would like to call it as a guy. It sounds a little bit better when you say wristband. So this is my paracord survival wristband. Uh, so this is kind of cool. I like this design a lot. And um, these are not that hard to make. And then lastly, um, I'm using Coyote Brown and Black on this one. And uh, this is the proper technique for the Cobra Crook braid in a uh, wristband format. Very cool in my opinion. And you can see the closure method is very simple. I just simply have a knot in a loop form right there. And uh, I don't have very large <laughs> wrist, as you can see. Uh, but this is the kind of things that I like making. I also make like pouches and things like that that I didn't bring with me here today. Uh, but you can do a lot. You know, I've made uh, rifle slings. Uh, you can make belts from them uh, and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk now about uh, where to get your paracord uh, and uh, additional information about paracord. 
So I would recommend uh, for you to get your paracord at campingsurvival.com. Now, I don't make any money doing this. This is just a courtesy. I get a lot of questions about parachute cord. Uh, but one of the largest selections of patterns and colors uh, is going to be over there at campingsurvival.com. Uh, they also have, uh, hands down, the best prices, especially when you buy uh, in bulk in these 1,000-foot uh, spools. And this is what I do, uh, once again. You can also buy in uh, smaller hanks if you don't want 1,000 feet. Uh, but you could always go in with a buddy and maybe three or four of your buddies, uh, uh, you know, divide up one of these spools, uh, and that would be a really good value. Now, what about uh, if you want to get some project ideas or learn new knots or braids? I'd have to say one of, a, of many different resources, because we know that YouTube is full of tutorials that are very good, some a lot better than others. But I'd have to say go over to paracordguild.com paracordguild.com. I'm going to have a link to that and uh, campingsurvival.com in the description below. Now let's look at 10 practical uses for uh, paracord products such as wristbands, bracelets, and fobs. Uh, we're not going to be working with a lot of, uh, of cordage here. Uh, they typically have maybe uh, anywhere from 6 to 20 feet, depending on uh, the actual design. Uh, the average paracord wristband that I make uh, typically has uh, about 9 to 10 feet at most. And so, uh, what are kind of some uses for this? Well, uh, the first five I'm going to give you is going to be for everyday use. Uh, you could make, um, you know, a shoelace out of this uh, if your shoelace broke. So, that's kind of something that could be very obvious. If your belt broke, you could make a makeshift belt. It'd be very rudimentary, but it would work. Uh, you could also make um, a tie-off or a means to secure gear to a belt or a backpack with this. You could also uh, repair clothing or backpacks uh, by using the inner threads of the paracord. And lastly, number five, you can make a zipper pull. If your zipper pull broke uh, or if you need an extended zipper pull, maybe you're wearing gloves that day and the zipper pull is way too short, uh, you could always uh, go ahead and uh, take a piece off of your paracord wristband. The next five uses are going to be focused more toward survival or emergency uses. The first one was going to be the means to construct or lash together a shelter. The next one is to create a fishing line. First aid could also be used to make uh, sutures. You can make a tourniquet with paracord, a bandage holder, a uh, sling, or to help uh, put together a splint. You could also take parachute cord to create restraints uh, or to make a camp alarm, such as a trip alarm. And lastly, you can use paracord uh, for making tools especially in an emergency, or to bind materials. As a bonus, you can use paracord as a fire tender, uh, or you can construct a, a bow drill with it. Uh, so these are just uh, different ideas. Just like duct tape, cording has probably 101, if not 1,001 uses. Um, I really prefer a uh, parachute cord that's U.S. made, once again, and at military specs. I like the 550 Type 3 variant in size, and uh, I would have to say this is what I would recommend. So all you got to do is select the color that you like or the pattern uh, and get yourself a good spool uh, and divide it up uh, among your kits. And you'll have another means uh, to help you get through uh, potentially uh, difficult challenges.